Merry Christmas. And good morning to all my hearers. My message today is titled, Only what is done for Jesus Christ lasts. Only what is done for the Lord lasts forever. And uh, our scripture is going to be taken from Mark chapter 14, verses 3 to 9. They, there are parallel um, passages found in Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 to 11, and John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. But let us read Mark 14, 3 to 9 from the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. The other versions called him Simon the leper. While he was eating, a woman came in with, an, uh, with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke it, she broke one, she broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Father, thank you for your word that you have given us. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us in accents clear and still. Bless the hearers. Cause your word, O oh God, to bear fruit in their lives. Cause somebody today to look back after this message and say, what can I do? What shall I do to be saved? Father, speak. Holy Spirit, take control of this hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is Christmas season, a time when people give uh, gifts to friends and relations without intending to judge or criticize any minister of the gospel. These days, when some of us preachers want to buy special private jet airplanes, or to acquire a residential uh, mansion, they call for super sacrificial giving. They ask their audience to empty their pockets and expect God to surprise them. They even ask you to empty your bank account and the Lord will fill it in multiples. I am not saying in any way that God cannot give you back or that it is wrong to give sacrificially to God's work or to the welfare of one that feeds you spiritually. After all, in Galatians chapter 6 verse 6, we read that those who are taught, who are taught the word of God, should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them, 
Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 asks the question. It says, since we have planted spiritually, spiritual seeds among you, aren't, you, aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? But I tell you, only what you do for Jesus Christ lasts forever. That's our theme today. Tell someone near you, do something for Jesus Christ. This story we read, the story we read earlier, was an event that took place around the last week before Jesus Christ's week of suffering and death, which we call the Passion Week. The events and teachings of Jesus Christ around this period encompassed Jesus' prediction of the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem, the signs of the times and the end of the age, the great tribulation, the second coming of the Son of Man, parables relating to the times of the end, the final judgment, and so on. Jesus had also just raised Lazarus from the dead, and the Jewish leaders were planning to kill him and Lazarus so as to kill the news, the good news of what Jesus had done. Now, Jesus was already looking ahead towards the cross at the same time during that period. Let's see what happened in the home of Simon the leper. Jesus Christ visited the home of Simon the leper at Bethany for a dinner in his honor. While Jesus was at table and Martha was busy serving, a woman came, a woman by the name Mary, Though in the gospel, according to Matthew and according to Mark, the name was not given. They just said a woman. Mary, who was the sister of Martha and Lazarus, the man that Jesus Christ raised from the dead a few days earlier, decided to appreciate Jesus with a gift that could not be taken back. We do not know exactly what the relationship was between Simon the leper and Lazarus, Mary and Martha, but from all indications, all of them were present at the dinner at which Jesus was hosted. Mary, according to John chapter 12, verse 3, brought one pound weight alabaster jar of a very expensive perfume or ointment made of pure nard, broke the jar and poured the ointment on Jesus Christ. I want you to note that Jesus did not solicit for the anointing that Mary did. Mary broke the jar so that she would empty it on Jesus without reservation. The value of the ointment was uh, up to 300 denarii, which was an equivalent of one year's wages. Some organizations in New York, New York State, and in the USA have the uh, minimum wage per annum as at $15 an hour, um, which is equal to $30,600. In other words, the value of what was, uh, the value of, the, of the, the, that uh, ointment that uh, Mary poured, if it was today, it would cost about $30,600. So now I tell you the value of what you do for or to give to the Lord matters a lot. 
Remember, the offerings which Cain and Abel presented to the Lord at the early stages of mankind's existence. God approved one and disapproved the other, which resulted in the death of Abel as a result of jealousy. <clears throat> Let's look at some reactions. As Mary made the sacrifice, some people whose business it was not grumbled that the woman wasted money. Money that should have been um, spent for the poor. One of the grumblers who voiced out who voiced out his uh, his indignance was Judas Iscariot. There's no record in the Bible that Judas Iscariot, who had an ulterior motive, according to John twelve six, ever cared for the people for any poor people or anybody else for that matter. So, when you work for or give largely to the Lord, you must expect some criticism. But we take consolation in the Apostle Paul's admonition, which says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest. If we do not give up, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Jesus Christ responded to the murmuring or grumbling of the people, as we find in Matthew uh, chapter 26, verses 13, 10 to 13. He said to them, Do not bother the woman, leave her alone. He said, the woman has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have. In the King James, he said, me you do not have always. The poor and the needy you always have. Jesus quoted that passage from Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 11 that says, For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. That was God's uh, command. There is no society in the world where poor people do not abound, not even in the United States of America. There are poor people everywhere. But Jesus said that they would not always have him physically around here since within a few days, within the subsequent one week, he would have been crucified. He knew that. While Jesus did, um, did not mean that we should not care for the poor, he implied that priorities should be given to him. That is what Mary did. Because Jesus said, and the Bible said, that anything or anybody you put ahead of God becomes your God. But you should not have any other God except him. A father that, that worked hard to train his children well academically, and helped to get them well placed in society, told his children sometime to appreciate him while he was still living and had the ability to enjoy their appreciation rather than wait for him to die, let him die of hunger or lack, and then close roads to elaborately and lavishly entertain friends at the death of their father. Appreciate me while I am living. In fact, we read in Proverbs 19, 17 that if you help the poor, 
you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. So Jesus could not have spoken otherwise. Jesus did not mean you should not help the poor, but you should appreciate him while you have the ability. The woman prepared his body for burial by the anointing. Jesus knew something that people did not know, being omniscient. Do you know that God sometimes uses our actions to achieve things we never planned for or intended? Consult the brothers of Joseph, the son of Jacob, who sold Joseph into Egypt. If they knew that Joseph was going to become somebody of worth, they would not have sold him. This is why you must act when the Holy Spirit prompts you to give or to do something for someone else. Because you don't know what you are saving. He, the Holy Spirit, knows things you don't know. And he sees beyond the farthest that you can see. Now, Jesus added that whenever the gospel, or whenever and wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, like we do right now, what this woman did will also be told in memory of her. Every good thing that you do remains remembered, especially if done for Christ and or for his people. On the contrary, Shakespeare says the evils that men do live after them. But sometimes these days they live with them. Let's consider things that you, do, you can do for Jesus Christ. One, self-sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. When you do something else, when you do, nothing else will be too difficult for you or too much for you to give to God. Such other things include your time. Remember, time is required for service for the Lord. There is never time for anything unless you create it. And that depends on the value you attach to such a thing or, to, or such service. Another thing you can give is money. Money is difficult to give to God for his work. But when you understand that all that you are and have are from the Lord, who has redeemed you, and loved you so much, you can give anything, any amount. Three, you can give love for God and love for your uh, neighbor as yourself. Bear in mind that love finds expression in giving, as we find in John chapter 3, verse 16, that tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Also in John 13 verse 34 and verse 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, so that you also love one another. By this all men, all will know, that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Jesus re requires us to love one another. Another thing you can give to the Lord is witnessing for him. The major assignment that Jesus Christ left for us, for his disciples, is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, where he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, mm. even to the end of the age. The same instruction appears, a similar instruction appears in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. It says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, You shall be my witnesses to me. Sorry, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Then, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, Jesus told a parable, but then from the parable, no, he was saying what was going to happen but in the times of the end. But then he, he used someone else. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Jesus is coming back, remember. Then he will sit at the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goods on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Skip to verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it for me. Verse 41. When then... He will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So here it's mentioned that, the, the, that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But some people are now being posted into that place. Verse 45, Then he will answer... He will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to me, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Pure and undefiled religion is another thing you can do for the Lord. The Apostle James says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Are you committed to this? Do you, do you ever visit any orphans or any widows? Generosity to missionaries. In 3 John verse 5, the Apostle John said, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. People, people you have helped have borne witness before the church of what you have done. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 10, it says, Therefore we have, therefore as we have opportunity, 
let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Have you ever considered helping a member of this church? Use your spiritual gifts. To use your spiritual gift is another thing you can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 25, 21 is our reference for this. In the parable of the talents, Jesus said that the servants that were faithful in using the talents uh, that the master, their Lord, um, has given them, were told, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. To whom much is given, much is expected. If you do not use the spiritual gift God has given you, you lose it. And any blessing God has blessed you with, he expects you to use it. So, why must we do something for Jesus? Because our message is, do something for the Lord. And we said also that whatever, only what you do for the Lord Jesus Christ lasts forever. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, referenced earlier, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's one reason we must do good to the Lord. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 34, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That is a reward. In Matthew 16, 27, he said, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, it says, Each one's work will become clear, for the day, that day, capital D, will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on it, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards <coughs> his name, in that you have ministered to the saints, and you still do minister. God gives us generously. God, we want to consider how to give to Jesus or to the Lord now. See, God gives us generously. In fact, he gave his all, his only begotten son. Paul says it's an indescribable gift. As a sacrifice for sin of the whole world, so that Whoever believes in him, that is the sacrifice, that is Jesus Christ, should have everlasting life. This calls for us to be generous also in giving to him or doing service to him. Mary broke the alabaster jar in order to empty the expensive perfume or ointment on Jesus, which I have called a non-return to zero uh, action. That was like burning the bridge behind you, so a retreat is impracticable. Give generously to Jesus Christ. He said, as recorded in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. This love deserves reciprocity. Do something for Jesus Christ today. 
In conclusion, search your heart. Have you been stingy in your giving to the Lord? Jesus Christ said, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Apostle Paul wrote, But this I say, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, as you do service to Jesus Christ's ministry, do not overlook the poor and needy around you, especially members of the church. You can help someone to become rich too, like you, because one rich man surrounded by mostly poor people is equally a poor person, very miserable. But if you help somebody to become like you are, the burden will be shared. We agree with the word of God that there is nothing you have that is not given you. Think for a moment then. Suppose God gives to you all things, including the air you breathe in, have measures like you give him stingily. What would happen to you? Will you resolve to generously do something for Jesus today and always? Note that your sacrifice or gift is an abomination to God. If you do not belong to him, you must therefore Invite Jesus Christ into your heart now to be your Savior and Lord, which automatically empowers you to become a child of God, a son or a daughter of God. If you have already done so, but you know that you have been stingy in giving to the Lord, I appeal to you to repent now. Don't wait to think about it before you make a decision before you take an action. May the Lord bless you and help you to make up your mind and um, to make up your mind to turn a new leaf today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, I would love to sing just one stanza of this hymn before we close because our time is far spent. Something for thee. Savior, thy dying love, thou gavest me. Nor should I aught withhold, dear Lord, from thee. In love my soul would bow, my heart fulfill his vow. Some offering bring thee now, something for thee. Amen. I want to please encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is stated here, Daniel Wellena. And then I'd like you also to look into my website, danielwellenabooks.com look it up and uh, subscribe to my channel invite somebody to subscribe to um in in, in the channel in the uh, website you will find my books i don't have time to really talk much about them now this one acting movie scripts or fulfilling prophecies we also have family structure by choice and we also have Jesus Christ, Savior, Judge, and King of the world. May the Lord bless you and prosper you as you give in response to the gift that Jesus, that God has given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, I commit all these people that have listened to this message unto you. 
I pray you will bless them this week. And as we prepare to go into a new year, prepare your people. Lord, prepare to prosper them. Prosper our ways. Bless the works of our hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. To him who loved us and washed us with our, from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.